Hello and welcome to another podcast with myself, Mike. And Calm. Can I say, Michael, thanks very much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you. You reversed that from last time, last time you said... I am an unpredictable character, Michael. That's something (laughs) that many people find out over the years. Sometimes not necessarily to their convenience. No, certainly not. Including all those times when you actually uh, bore your nakedness to the world and was arrested for it. Let us not talk about them. So was arrested for it. Did you hear that? That, that, was, that well, was good English. It's coming up to the season again, Jingle Balls. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. So, it is coming up to something, Cal. Star yeah. Wars, episode seven. Seven. Have you noticed, though, that they've kind of dropped calling it episode seven? It's just The Force Awakens. Yeah, because that means they'd have to acknowledge the prequels. Now, on our channel, we occasionally like to do some movie discussion stuff. And uh, after the last podcast we did, which was about the horror western Bone Tomahawk, which you should go and check out, not right now, just after we finished, we did talk about the possibility of doing a podcast on Star Wars as a horror film or the horror elements within Star Wars. I'm not sure what we're going to call Guys, it. Guys, hold on moment. tight because this link is tenuous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hold on. <laughs> really tight. But I, I don't think it is because, you see, uh, we're mainly going to be talking about the original trilogy because... Sorry, the, the trilogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the, <laughs> because the prequels are horror films in and of themselves. Mm. But when I was Generations a kid, was the worst. Stop slagging Star Trek, Cal, please. When uh, when I was a kid, growing up watching the original prequels, I was three years old when Return of the Jedi came out, and when I did watch the, the original trilogy, there were elements of it that did frighten me as a kid, and when I watch it now as an adult, I love those films, but I think there are still elements of it that are kind of dark fantasy, almost horror-esque uh, in places. So I want to take well, you... Well, that first... is fantasy, isn't it? Science fantasy, yeah. the whole kind of thing. It's kind of almost impossible to deny it because you've got your, you know, kind of stereotypes. You've got your wizard and you've got your kind of knights. And, you know, that's something that some people look pa- past and they're always like, oh, yeah, it's science fiction, but it's not it's science, science fiction. fiction. It's not science fiction. It's definitely science fiction. It's, def- it's not science fiction. It's definitely science fiction. It's definitely <laughs> science fantasy, space opera, that, science that fact. kind of thing. Because yeah. it does say it happened a long time ago and it got so far away. Who are we to disagree? You can't disprove that, Cal. <laughs> so right. I want to take you back to the first film uh, that was made, A New Hope. Yep. And uh, can you think of any element in that film which uh, has a, a horror aspect to it. Yes. And I'm thinking of a pretty big one, but you go first. Okay, uh, I'd, first of all, someone's aunt and uncle being burnt alive. <laughs> Do you know what? I totally <laughs> forgot that happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's so traumatised. <laughs> What's that, Daddy? No, never mind, son. Just now, keep looking can at Can I the give you a sons. little bit, that, uh, a little bit, tip bit of Star Wars trivia? Do you know in Empire Strikes Back where uh, Darth Vader says to Boba Fett, no disintegrations? Yeah. Rumour has it that it was Boba Fett that burnt Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru alive and he got yeah. a bit of a reputation for being a bad boy for disintegrating cunts um well, darth wouldn't be he, he, vader wouldn't be very happy with them maybe because they're like kind of because he, kno- he knows them but marriage. this is the thing at the time there's all that shit where they're like oh yeah he would have known them and then you know it would have been like uh you know oh your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough he's like oh did he tell you that after you chopped his legs off and kicked him on a volcano <laughs> <laughs> and, anyway so uh, you're talking about when uh, Uncle Owen un- and Amaru yeah. are burnt alive. Prior to that, of course, let's not forget all the Jawas. Well, they are, mass- they're kind of like little demons, and if anyone's actually watched the film Phantasm, there are creatures in it that are very reminiscent of the Jawas. Well, I can hear Martin Yates' ears burning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our, our uh, colleague at Ghastly Tales, Martin loves himself some phantasm <laughs> phantasm detector but yeah it's uh, quite grim in a, in, in, in a film that is is like a you isn't it here in yeah. terms of classification no so shit like, everything you look at that you're like whoa <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to remember but 
Like, am I totally misremembering this? Are, are their bodies just charred and burned, or is there actually something sticking out of one of no, them? No, the Jawas are just like it's mainly. It's really just kind of cloaks lying about. No, I'm to- sorry, I'm, sorry. Oh no, I'm, Uncle and I'm Uncle, Uncle, Yeah, Aye, it's black skeletons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like smoking black skeletons. <laughs> they, they'll be fine. I know. <laughs> we bit so, of magic force so dust. There's a brilliant. Maybe we can stick the image up. I know that's a lot to ask in editing, but um, there's actually someone's made figures of dead Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru, and it's just ashes in a figure box. <laughs> God. Uh. Um. So that, but that is it's, it's a horrific scene. Uh, or side note, rather, mm. in, in uh, the first Star Wars film. But, but yeah, the Jawas as well, they do look like sort of Satan's mm. little helpers. Yeah, and, of course, we, we get introduced to them, um, and they do, and they basically just, uh, obviously, capture droids and sell them into slavery, which is, you know, if they were just normal robots, wouldn't be quite so bad, but when they've got personalities and stuff, you're like, where do you draw the line? Like, where does slavery yeah. stop being slavery? Uh, it, it is slavery, but I was going to say mention the big one, uh, which is Darth Vader himself. Mm. I mean, obviously he's a fantastic villain, but I think the aspect of the his breathing, the laboured breathing, the fact that you know he's he's kind of part machine, um, something bad has re- has really happened to him. There's, there's like a sort of, I guess, a thread that's in horror where. There's a almost a fear of someone who's ill, mm. and uh, I think there's part of that in Darth Vader with his sort of asthmatic breathing, yeah. you know, like and and all, not to mention the fact that his face mask looks like a skull. Um, and well, but well, let's not forget his accent, his classic Bristol accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, tear this like, ship apart. I want you to find the plans. <laughs> what was it? Uh, thingy Prouse? David Prouse, the yeah, Green Prowse. Cross Code Man. I don't know why they dubbed over my, my dialogue. <laughs> That's it. Oh, look, Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, uh, that David Prouse was the person who played Darth Vader in the suit. And, and you can find videos of him online doing his original dialogue and oh, oh boy <laughs> yeah it's pretty hilarious if you can imagine Darth Vader as a farmer <laughs> on helium then uh, maybe uh, you'll get a good idea where we're going with that but but especially in Empire Strikes Back mm. yeah jump, I mean jumping film here but look, when you have Darth Vader I remember watching that as a kid and when you see the back of his head and it's all scarred yeah, yeah. The, the helmet's getting put on. It's a, the, there's something really, there was always something really frightening about that to me. Oh yeah, um, and it's when you actually get uh, a kind of glimpse of the fact that you know, kind of outwardly by his actions and his demeanour, he's a monster, but then physically himself, he's quite yeah. monstrous. Uh, it really kind of adds up. But he's an interesting character himself, and as he kind of. Pro- progressively goes on obviously gets a redemption in the th- uh, the third part but Spoilers. in the second yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> if you didn't know Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father um but do you know what I saw Return of the Jedi before I saw I saw Emperor Strikes Back Emperor first Strike Back. yeah see I saw Return of the Jedi so all of a sudden look I'd see, I had uh, watched A New Hope and mm. then I watched Return of the Jedi because it was out on VHS right when we first, when we first got a VHS player we got it out my, I think my brother and... Do you want to tell my, people what a VHS player is? Yes. My brother and my dad had been to cinema. Uh, to been, cinema. <laughs> been to, to cinema. It's starting to talk like David Prowse. Yeah. Been to cinema. They'd, they'd been to the cinema to watch Empire Strikes Back uh, when it was out. And obviously I was too young or not born, maybe. Mm. Um, and... But when we got a VHS player, Return of the Jedi was, was one of the main things in the video shop. So we... We got it out and I watched that and all of a sudden Luke Skywalker was talking about Darth Vader mm. being his dad and I didn't really understand. Yeah, you wouldn't have been in existence May 28th, 1980. Yeah, I wouldn't have been. Um, would have been a force ghost. That's a yes. Do they, ha- do they have like... A mere, a mere jism. <laughs> um, uh, but, but certainly I think Darth Vader also exudes a, a, a bit of Dracula. Mm. And his, you know the black cape as well, and and the, the and all the best parts of black exploitation as well. But also, if you if you <laughs> if you, Jesus, if that's you, true. 
yeah, yeah. He's a cool a, cat. Y- yeah, he is cool. But um, he has <coughs> that... I think they, they borrowed a lot from like Bela Lugosi, mm-hmm. where he's he has obviously the, the force powers and he can manipulate people's minds. He can um, manipulate them physically just with thought and the hand gestures as well when he's on the Death Star and he's he's uh, with Grand Moff Tarkin and he, he starts force choking the guy. Yeah. All that sort of stuff is really reminiscent of Bela Lugosi when he played Dracula. Well, let's not forget as well the fact that <clears throat> you've got... <clears throat> Sorry, let me just clear my throat there. Um, you've got Han Solo, who's a tremendous sceptic uh, for the first couple of films. You know, he's famously quoted as saying, you know... I've been fucking here and there across the universe and I've never seen anything that He does say, may the force be with you at the end of the film. And yeah, it, yeah. It sounds pretty forced. Yeah, no, it's just like, oh, thanks, thanks for, oh, uh, thanks for uh, you, potentially getting me back in with this bit of tidy princess here. Um, but um, you put me off, mate. Basically, um, Han Solo kind of is quite famously in the first one, kind of goes, oh, that's a load of shite. That old guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't right? say it like that. More or less, right? That's the bridge version. But in the second film, he's still quite cocky about it. And then he goes into that room uh, where they, they're having the dinner, which subsequently must be the world's most awkward dinner. We never see it on camera, but, you know, and he tries to shoot Darth Vader and Darth Vader just pulls the gun out of yeah. his hand after stopping two bolts in his hand and he goes, we'd be honoured if you could join us. And Han Solo's like... Fuck! There might be something to this. I I think as well though that um, going back to a New Hope for a second, there is the idea of the weird and wonderful creatures that are in the Star Wars universe. There is a sort of uh, including mo- the actual Wolfman. There's a like in the cantina yeah. they had practically fuck all money, so there's like actual Halloween masks some of them were wearing. Yeah. One of them is the Wolfman. But that's what I'm saying. I, it feels like a those aspects of it feel like, like a sort of old universal monster movie. Yeah. Um, and I was I was always really frightened by, what, what did I say his name was? Cornelius something? The guy that says, I don't well, like you. From Planet of the Apes? No. <laughs> uh, My friend doesn't sort of like you either. Defo- yeah. With uh, his deformed nose and all that. But like, Is I, his I, pal not called Ponda Baba? I'm, I have no idea. Let I me Google know, that. I'm pretty... I just know that his he name fucking is, is as well. I think his name is Cornelius. Pretty sure. The other guy's called Pondababa, the guy that can actually speak English, uh, and could be potentially completely and utterly misconstrued. Where his pals just using him as an excuse to make fights. And he's like, look. Was there, was there not a really funny sketch when that was it not like robot chicken or something like yeah that? yeah and he's he, just like he's just being like a peacemaker and all that. yeah he's just like look no I didn't say that at all. Um, so anyway. Uh, Back to the horror of Star Wars. Um, yeah, there's a there's a monster movie aspect to that first film as well, and it would be remiss of us if we did not mention the fact that it's got a horror icon in the first movie, in the form of Peter Cushing, who uh, is a, a, a he's just an amazing governor amazing of Tarkin. Actor. And I realised that I just called him Peter Cushing rather than Cushing. He's a soft and lovable that. character. Yeah, uh, Van Helsing himself. So anyway. Do you not think, though, if we if we go forward to Empire Strikes Back, that... Um, Is there not any more in the, A New Hope? In A New Hope? Well, well, hot, well, hit me with them. Well, give me a second. No, you can't have dead air, Callum. You can't say, just let me... Let right, me so we, we've had a planet blow up, at which point a guy's gone... It's as if uh, millions of souls suddenly that's sound true. Up and that's, that's, suddenly that's silent. Its own way. That is a pretty poignant scene, and is also, I mean, you've kind of got to try and get your head around what it must be like to be a person that could feel mm. that many people screaming out at once. It must be like being a reporter in Syria. Um, oh God, Cal, that's um, a really misplaced joke. It's not a joke. I was being deadly serious. You're you're comparing. A piece of light entertainment. <laughs> Star Wars and light entertainment, that's a cultural behemoth, mate. Um but yeah, uh I, I don't know. I think I uh, I think fundamentally all in that, I think with the first one other than Obi Wan Kenobi disappearing into a pile of robes in front of <laughs> his his kind of uh you know, son figure. 
I always liked how Darth Vader sort of prodded his feet. I fucking <laughs> like just grinds it, like, it into the no, dirt. Uh, but it's also as if he's checking, like, I'm not falling for this one again, <laughs> Obi-Wan. Yeah, fucking bullshit. But, you know, it depends how you want to take that, because he's like, he knows that he's talking, because he's just, he's just shouted across, and he's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> That's your pal. I'm grinding into the fucking dirt. I think that's us for A New Hope, though. I think so. On moving to... On, moving on to empire strikes back yeah which is widely regarded as the the best of it is the best yeah it's it's a great movie it's the best but the the wampas yeah which where which was completely rewritten after um mark camel forgot how to drive um and crashed his car and ended up with these uh had to get facial reconstructive Mm. surgery so originally there was like a big wampa attack on the base which yeah. some footage still exists of, but they had to change it so that he would get captured and then get attacked. And I think it does work for the better. I mean, so there's some pretty good scenes as a result, but that's how they managed to factor it in so that Luke would get hit across the face and you would mm. notice it the least. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's, fucking it's, it's, chopping it's, its arm off. But it's, yeah, but more than that, just what it is, it, it looks like a Yeti. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty terrifying. Or what we know a Yeti to be. And I don't that, like I don't like most of the editions and the special editions, but the extra shots they put in, as far as I remember, are quite good. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, I think yeah, I think they had a couple of new they things. Show you, they, well, they, sh- they show you a full. There's a there's a wide shot of him, I, I think, with his arm cut off. Yeah, yeah, uh, and he's pure fucking going absolutely nuts. Going, what do you do that for? I'm just going to help you out. But I thought the the sort of like icy caverns and the, this beast living in there that's always been. Uh, I, I love the nineteen fifties film, The Abominable Snowman. That mm. uh, I was going to say, funnily enough, it's got Peter Cushing in it, but does it? I can't remember. Um, let's just guess. I'm pretty sure it does. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's just guess. Let's just say that is true. Um, you're you're googling that, aren't you? I can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the the wampas are pretty terrifying. Um, are there any other uh, nineteen fifty seven Peter Cushing? Yeah, horror esque elements to Empire Strikes Back. Fucking me, chock full. The most important one was one that you actually brought up earlier on, which was Dagobah, which is the trial. I can't actually I remember. Should say I brought it up in a text conversation before this. Yeah, it's not in the actual podcast. Um, there's actually uh. I believe there's actually a, a reference to uh, there's actually a name for it. I can't specifically remember, but it's I, I, from my memory of it. It's supposed to be oh yeah, the cave of evil, and it's actually the darkest place on Dagobah, and it actually mm-hmm. like manifests your own kind of dark side. So it's like um, an embodiment of Skywalker's own. It's kind of like foreshadowing of the fact that yeah. that Darth Vader's his father, but at the same time, it's a, a kind of a, a nod to the potential darkness that's within himself. In the Clone Wars animated series, they have Yoda goes in it himself and faces Dark Yoda. <laughs> Fucking explain. just gets absolutely blasted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Smoke up, Johnny. What's, what's quite, I think what's creepy about it, I mean, first of all, it is this kind of swamp forest setting which, which can be which brings up feelings of like isolation anyway but if you actually watch those scenes i think there's, there's there are structures there so it's as if something has been built there at some point and that i think adds a kind of uh deeper feel to those scenes because you're wondering what was there and what terrible things happened where that's all went into ruin if you know what i mean well it's an interesting one as well because like either like yoda was trying to big style jeremy beedlem by saying <laughs> oh you won't need your weapons at which point he would have gone there's fucking darth vader in here yeah no it's ah. that's but, a terrifying moment though when he oh when, yeah when the mask explodes and it's luke's face just disembodied cold, head yeah and it's the the cold dark stare of yeah. death <laughs> he's just like shit is this a real guy um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. It does make you feel, uh, it does make you wonder whether um, what would have happened had he not gone in. You know, was that like a kind of an impetuous side of him that needed to be removed as part of the training, or had he gone in without the weapons, would he have had a more peaceful 
Stance, you know what you know what what I'm trying to say is was him going in with the weapons kind of a, a a slightly you know kind of more aggressive path and that's what led to him having that vision. Who knows? George Lucas know. knows, but no know. one cares about him know, anymore. Cal. I don't know. I don't but know. yeah, the dark side cave is distinctly horror because that's it's called the cave of fucking evil. Oh fucking <laughs> evil! Can, can't, exactly, can't argue that. It's exactly what it's called: the cave of fucking evil. So can you think of any other parts in Empire Strikes Back that are dark enough which we can call them horror elements? Well, the original version of Empire Strikes Back was uh, the Emperor's first appearance was a woman's face with a chimpanzee's eyes. <laughs> That's pretty fucking horrific. Yeah, it, it, had, it was a prosthetic, wasn't it? And it had yeah. uh, eyes that blinked. Did they blink at different times as well? Hmm... So not in unison. There was there was some freaky I, stuff. I can't remember, on. but it was definitely a superimposed chimpanzee's eyes over a woman's face. I don't think it was a superimposed chimpanzee's eyes. Yes, it was. Hundred percent, mate. Fucking mastermind specialist subject. It was a mask. It was a prosthetic. Mate, it was chimpanzee's eyes. It was a prosthetic. Emperor I'm Palpatine, having... chimpanzee's eyes. Right, you're still calling him Palpatine. Stop it. Paul Patine. That's it's his Pal- name. Palpatine. It's Paul Patine. It's his first Paul. name's Paul. His name's not Paul. <laughs> Alright, Paul Patine. I just like winding you up now. We had this conversation on the live stream the yeah. other night. Here we go. Let me just read this verbatim from the Wikipedia, which is fact. <laughs> <laughs> fact. Um, do, do, do. Here we go. The Emperor in its original version of The Empire Strikes Back is portrayed by Elaine Baker and voiced by Clyde Revel. The eyes of a chimpanzee were superimposed into Baker's feature to make the character more e. Boom. Horror. Really? Yes. Boom. Horror. <laughs> Just superimpose chimpanzee's eyes yeah. over anything and it will be horror. Mate, you may well know your dilithium crystals, but I know my lightsaber crystals. <laughs> that, that's that's very true. Okay, I will I will concede that then. I just don't remember it looking like a, a superimposed effect. I, I but if you ever it. seen, if you ever seen like yeah. the original original one, like do you remember it? Yeah, you, you may well. I even well remember the get the guy's voice. I know it was a woman, but they they uh, dubbed in a guy's voice. Right. Okay, because most people like have had it retconned and just remember fucking Ian McDermott's bonds now. No, no, I don't. I'd never seen it. See, this was the problem when I first saw Star Wars. It was when I was seven years old when the special editions came out. So that was my only. That was my initial exposure to it. So I wasn't aware of the original one. So I grew up, mate. I grew up originally thinking that the fucking dance scene at the oh, in Return of the Jedi at Jabba's Palace was canon. That was the legit dancing. I just oh, went, right, well, awful. the rest of it's pretty good, but that's part of it. That's horror, actually. That's fucking that horror. horror. That that's fat horror. woman dancing about with six tits or whatever she's got. <laughs> oh, mate. No, no, no. no. Is, she not in the, is she not in the original? Mm, I don't oh, no, so. no, no. Not the one I'm thinking of. I'm Aye, thinking dancing of. at the palace. <laughs> Fuck that noise. <laughs> um, Empire Strikes Back has got loads more as well, though, because... I mean, we only have to think about one of the main characters being fucking cryogenically frozen against his will. Well, it's the fact that that he's, like, frozen in a solid material. In a pain stance as well. And it's like, oh, by the way, just to let you know, we only use this for, like, shipping dead chickens. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And Vader's so cold and everything as well. That's what's perfect. And Boba Fett's like, by the way, he's no good to me dead. And he's like, you know... If there's any problems, we'll compensate you for it. He doesn't give a fuck. No, of course it doesn't. He's Darth Vader. One of the things that really annoyed me was the fact that the original voice actors uh, was changed with... Uh, Boba Fett. Uh, well, well, whoever played Django Fett, the, the Kiwi guy, the Maori yeah. guy. Um, because the original voice for Boba it's, Fett it's really is good. shit hot. Yeah. He's like a 19 kind of fifties character actor, more or less. Yeah. The guy was fucking on point it's it was so good to me dad yeah and it's like a it's like a really understated thing and it's one of those voices where it's like the guy only had like four lines but it was just enough for you to go yeah this guy's fucking mac daddy and then we also have the monster and the asteroid oh that's right the space slug which, which i think is all right it's not it wasn't very frightening but it, I, I think it still cl- classifies as some sort of monster doesn't it well leah gets a wee uh 
fl- uh, what do you call it? Um, are they called? Wait, hang on. Jubak. Jubak. Right, uh, you can't keep doing no, this. Wait. It's a podcast. It's right, okay. So, <laughs> the, the rest... if you don't have the knowledge at the time, <laughs> you're a no, fucking no, idiot. No, yeah, no, there's... That, that is how it should work. There's like, the flying. The, people um, are Googling far too much. There's the flying winged fuckers inside the slug, mm. which stick to the window and give Princess Leia a flight. She's pretty horrified at that point. They give her a flight? A fright. A flight. They may well do, I don't know. I was commenting <laughs> on a fright, but uh, you know, they were they're quite creepy as well. And then yeah, I guess literally finding yourself that you're inside the giant belly of a I, slug. I think also especially as a kid, seeing a character who is usually like comic relief and uh a sort of positive character in the franchise be blown up into loads of different pieces and then be put on a conveyor belt to be oh, yeah, down. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, Justice! Yeah, <laughs> finally. C-3PO is dead. That's like, someone's like, can we write Anthony Daniels out of the, of the series because yeah, he's a horrible he's person? Because he's such a giant cock. <laughs> partly is, partly Oh yeah, terrible. horrible. He, told, he said, uh, I'm sure he said something like he wished Kenny Baker was dead. Fuck. And no, seriously, and he was glad that no, no, he was really annoyed that Kenny Baker came back and got credited in the new movies because, as he said, they only put him in the suit once as a token gesture. Oh man! And there's a bunch of other stuff as well. It was like when he was slagging off looks. Uh, Mark Hamill is like, oh yeah, he used to be such a handsome lad, is but he not in now. In the suit for the the Force Awakens, Anthony Daniels, yeah, yeah. Uh, is he? Yeah. He's pretty much maintained the same weight the whole time because he seems to be entirely constructed of like bad will and bile. <laughs> oh, that's a what a beautiful picture you paint. Also, um, the the actual lightsaber fight between Darth Vader and Luke is is pretty intimidating as well with it's, all the the, the the smoke and fumes around them. Very dark, um, and. It's was completely constructed that way, where there's this absolute, there's a kind of a, a rage and a naive, naivety, but it's so well put together. The one in Empire Strikes Back, and it's, uh, I think, like after seeing, you know, kind of Alec Guinness and, you know, Darth Vader fight in the first one, um, you know, people didn't expect too much from it, and then they really ramped it up, and yeah. that's something that the prequels lacked because they were so overly choreographed. There was a lot more emotion. In the later ones, but you're right yeah. with the the dark sets, kind of dimly lit by the odd light and the smoke and everything. There's so much atmosphere, and the kind of reveal of Darth Vader, you do realise that Luke Skywalker very quickly is like, "Fuck, I'm mega out my depth here." <laughs> and you you also have Luke Skywalker getting his hand cut off. Yeah, too fucking right. Um, <laughs> Deserved it. Uh, which is a big deal, um, and that's another fucking annoying change because when he falls, they added the. The full uh, sound effect of Empire of Paul Protein, yeah. um, like falling down the shaft o- over the top of him, which Why wasn't did in they the original. That, though, were they trying to like, oh, you know, like George always says, it's like poetry. It, it rhymes. Well, it, it rhymes. Was... It just it, it, it things repeat themselves. No, he just thought it was weird that Luke Skywalker would be shouting because uh, he'd thrown himself off, but he threw himself off of his own thing. He might have shouted, yeah. "Had he, you know, you know." accidentally falling off and going all right i will join you oh no <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on to the last film return of the jedi yep and first of all i would like to talk about uh jabba's palace yep are you thinking about the rancor keeper yeah, he's the, pretty horrific the the rancor <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking greasy belly big greasy belly well do you know one of the i thought one of the most frightening characters in star wars when i was a kid was uh, what's the name of see star wars fans are going to kill me for this that i don't know all the names but what's the name of uh jabba's interpreter bing bib fortuna right there you but go. but actually I had, he's, fi- he's, I had that figure as well when i was but, a kid but, but he's, he's actually, actually really his cool. like a uh, assistant his interpreter ctpo was acting as his interpreter ah right yeah that's true there you go. Double, double points. 
Um, but Jabba himself, I, I, I thought was was quite a, a sort of slimy oh. character. Oh, 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 oh. Hand me boogie. <laughs> Any time I absolutely pig out, I just enjoy just. just <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and then of course we have the the Rancor fight, which again is another yeah, yeah. another monster and. A long line of monsters in the Star Wars films. Which, though, it was an addition in the, um, what do you call it, the special editions. It's quite enjoyable seeing that girl getting eaten alive. Yeah, did you enjoy that? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a nice little setup later on for going, guarantee someone what else is going to What I to. really like, though, about that scene is that because it's a model, mm. it reminds me the Rancor kind of reminds me of earlier films like Jason and the Argonauts and things like that. Mm. Um, it, oh, the Rancor one, that was great. The what? The Rancor and Jason and the Argonauts yeah, was great. Yeah, very good, very good. Um, so we've got that then. Obviously we've got uh, the Sarlacc pit as well. Yep. Um, I, I, do, have we done enough of the Rancor? Because, you know, he kind of gets dropped down there with absolutely fuck all and this massive looming thing and then he traps his head and crushes it under a gate. Remember, yeah. it's a, a universal film, guys. Here's, universal film. But here's here's one for you, though. Luke himself is quite creepy when he first comes into the Oh, yeah, there. because he's proper dark. Uh, he's wearing these dark robes and everything as well and you... I think he's, I don't know, it's one of those things where you're you're kind of, I suppose, it's meant to be this whole will he won't he turn to the dark side and he's kind of been a while without having any guidance mm. or anything. But there's a whole bit of, um, he got cut out and they added it in, in the Blu-rays as an extra of like Darth Vader still trying to get him to join it. And he's, you know, wearing the hood over his head and he's quite kind of Emperor Palpatine in that kind of aspect. Yeah, he's assembling his, his lightsaber at the start yeah. of Return of the Jedi, isn't he, in some yeah. scenes as well. Um, it's all for the toys. This is a new lightsaber, guys. But then you've got the, the Sarlacc pit, which in itself isn't very frightening, but the idea that they say at one point that you'll be digested for a thousand years or something like that. Yeah, tell uh, that to Boba Fett, mate. Yeah, we know he made it out. Do we? It's not <laughs> canon. <laughs> well, they're doing a Boba Fett film, so I would assume he makes it out. He'll just start with them rocketing out. Yeah. And that would just be like, ha! Um, it's funny though with Return of the Jedi because it, it really does feel like two films like the the rescue of Han is its own thing separate from the rest of the story yeah and it's a sizable chunk of the movie yeah it's kind of to set it up but there was a lot of things as well like there was supposed to be a rivalry between Han Solo and Boba Fett and Boba Fett was supposed to survive and come back and they would fight each other and the shield generator and Han would die then but mm. George Lucas wanted to sell some toys well he would be ha- Han Harrison Ford will be happy now well that's true we'll Do see you know that I found out today I tweeted this earlier on that I always thought Harrison Ford was just really awkward in interviews but apparently he's like got really crippling anxiety with right. public public speaking and that's oh. that's why he's like that. Mm. Which but there's a, video, doesn't... there's a video of him trying to do a recorded message to someone at like a, an award. Right. And it's hilarious because he can't get through it. But seeing now, knowing that, it's actually quite sad watching it. Yeah. Because it's I think it, it, people have always been like that. Oh, he's stoned out his face. But I think it's genuinely that he's just he's trying to think of the right thing to say, and he's just getting sort of tied up in his own words. Poor, poor guy. I know, end of the day, still ha- Harrison fucking Ford can do he's, whatever he likes. He's done all right. He's done yeah, all right. He's awesome. He's awesome. Um, so, moving further into the film, then, when we get away from the Sarlacc pit, what else uh, do you think has a horror element? In the. the. the, the, the Jedi. Jedi. Aye, that's where we are, Carl. Keep um, up. There's not so much in the Return of the Jedi until I guess the end, where you know this gnarly old guy starts electrocuting the emperor. Uh, but the emperor himself is really again. It goes back to that idea of of sort of fear of disease. He mm. comes across as this really diseased and mm. warped individual. Well, he's kind of like the prototype for an internet troll, isn't he? Like he just <laughs> winds you up constantly with you stuff. He's like, this, "You want this, you? don't you? Your friends are all going to die." I'm afraid this. 
Shield <laughs> generator will be, be not fully operational by the time your friends arrive. Will be quite operational by your friends arrive. He's just like looking at myself to go, you can't do fuck all. <laughs> Fire at will, Commander. What I love there is you tried to correct me, yeah, and then you fell over your own words, which was yeah. brilliant. I got, bro- I got bogged down in your own treacle. You got so excited, you were like, "Oh, I'm going to correct him," and then I could do it properly now, but no right, one wants on, to hear. Go on. Mm. Oh, I'm afraid. So anyway, Callum, uh, do... <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, it's sorry. okay. It's fine. <sighs> So the emperor is he is he comes across as this sort of twisted uh diseased old man um obviously with the the hood and everything there's all kind of like a monastic vibe to him as well you can't use that word anymore monastic all oh, right that's what you said sorry that's fine what did, <laughs> what did you think i said Cal? something beginning with s oh christ um partly you can't say christ either but <laughs> all right okay yeah. you can say hello though no you can't uh you can say whatever you want that's the point uh luke skywalker nearly died for our rights to... <laughs> for our rights to actually follow jediism yeah. as a religion yeah but the, i think the, the entire ending of return of the jedi the entire confrontation between luke skywalker and darth vader it it is it's it's really dark. It's operatic. Well, it's, it's so full of like vitriol yeah. as well. Um, when Darth Vader mentions about uh, you know perhaps your sister will turn, you know that then <laughs> it was, maybe I'll we'll get a little bit of that, and he just goes <laughs> fucking nuts. It's awesome though. It really is. Yeah, it is. I I love the panning shot. Is that as Luke sort of driving Darth Vader back as he's fighting him? It's and the music and everything is just so perfectly corrugated. And then he's just absolutely pelting fuck out of him till he chops his hand off. And then he realizes that he's turning into his father because he looked at his own hand. And then Emperor of Poplin is like, you know what? You're just a pair of saps up here. You. Boom! Electricity. <laughs> and then fucking Darth Vader throws him down a lift shaft. You're like, yes! Here's what I've always wondered. To, when I when I used to watch Return of the Jedi when I was a kid, before the prequels and all that, I used to think that when Darth Vader lifts the Emperor up mm-hmm. and just bops him down that uh, that big massive opening, mm-hmm. I used to think that part of it was that part of the Emperor's powers were what was keeping him alive. Right. No. What actually what happens is if you watch the electricity ah, so uh, damages. It yeah, it damages his own respirator, and that's why he can't breathe, and he, he wants to take his helmet off because it's not doing any more function anymore. Mm. So kind of like a last fucking act of spite. I kinda, He's like I taking like, an asthmatics inhaler. I kind of like the idea, though, that that uh, he was so badly damaged that he needed... To be burnt. somehow <laughs> to... He needed somehow the, the Sith powers from his master, you know, to sort of keep him going. yeah. That's a nice thought. It's a nice, nicely dark thought. And last, but by no means least, uh, we should say we've got ghosts in Star Wars. Yes, that's true. Full-blown ghosts, although only... No, apparently they can change their appearance over time at the whim of certain directors. <laughs> and to Hayden Christensen, the uh, most wooden man on the planet. I Look hate that. sand. <laughs> um, so, Cunt. there you go. I think there are quite a few horror darker i like that we've completely ignored the prequels that's well, i was great. about to say the only thing i can think of for the prequels that's worth saying is that the scene where anakin goes in to in revenge of the sith and he um murders all the younglings yeah and then the scene where he murders all the tuscan raiders yeah i suppose as well that's that's quite quite brutal as well but we don't really want to talk about those films yeah, really. they don't really exist. Um, no. I've done a little bit of googling here, and it actually appears that there are some horror novels that are set in the Star Wars universe, including one known here as the Death Trooper. Yeah, which... I saw that. I, 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 did you send? Did you send that to me today? No, I didn't. You must yeah, have got I that thought... off your own back. Yeah, because well the, the front covers the Stormtrooper uh, mm. mask. 
Yeah. And, it's, and it says that the author that wrote it said that if you like The Shining, you'll like this. Which is interesting. And apparently uh, it's a sequel to Dark Forces, which was a fucking absolutely awesome game. Yeah. But a series of um, books were also made around the Kel Katarn character, which is a shame mm. he never... He's kind of not canon because he was quite a good character. There was a bunch of stuff that that was pretty cool that in the expanded universe that isn't canon now. And, mm. uh, but I think it becomes so weighty and no one is really overlooking the entire thing that I think it's for the best that they, they, they try and just keep the movie separate. Although they're not doing that, they're saying that the books that they release from now on are canon. Yes, that's right. They're kind of rebooted it, but perhaps we could uh, try and factor this into the edit. I've got a picture of uh, Chewbacca and Han Solo fighting various zombies, which are based on that book, <laughs> Zombie Stormtroopers. Oh, which, that's pretty awesome. And a zombie Wookiee, which looks pretty fucking awesome. A zombie Wookiee? Yeah. <laughs> you can see his rib cage and shit. Might need to read this. Yeah, I know. Sounds, sounds pretty easy. Anyway, I think we will wrap it up there. I hope you've enjoyed our conversation about horror elements within the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. If there's any moments in the Star Wars franchise that you can think of that we have forgotten to oh, mention, this is in the prequels. Please do leave a comment down below, <laughs> even if it is in the prequels. Have at it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah and we will be back soon with another discussion video and we've got narrations and all that other good stuff in between and just before we go i just wanted to leave you with the two most scary words in the star wars canon which is jar jar good night everyone good night stay safe good night from him good night from me stay safe stay safe good night, good night. stay safe star wars stay <laughs> Star Wars. Gas Tales. Gas Tales. Stay safe.